The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Scripture tells us in Psalms 30 verse 5 that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And for those who believe and trust and acknowledge Jesus as King, He gives us the reassurance in saying that God is our refuge and strength and the ever-present help in a time of trouble. I first of all like to take this opportunity to extend my sincerest and heartfelt condolences to the family of Anthony Winter. I'd like for us to remember that we're here today to celebrate a life. A life even though regrettably has been taken away from us so prematurely. But the years that Anthony spent on this earth has made a direct and indelible impact on many people that are here today to support. So I must remind you, first of all, that if you're here, you're here for one reason and one reason only. It's to support the family. And in that support, I'd ask for you just to observe some house rules that we have in place. First of all, for those who may need to use the toilets, they are to my right at the back here and there are some toilets at the back. Also to show that we are aware that today there is no aspect of fire alarm testing, so if we do hear a fire alarm, please make your way out of the exits that you came in, and also there's exits to my left and to my right. And I ask, I know that everybody in this day which is important, and I place value on the importance of individuals, but at the same time, as I said before, we are here to respect and support the family of Anthony Luther, so I ask that whilst we're here, that we observe the fact that it's about them today, it's about the family. So I'd ask you to put your phones on silent, and if you've not managed to work out where you put them silent, just put, turn it off for the time being. I don't want rings and everyone saying hello in the middle of the services. Quite disturbing. And as I said, for the time that we're here in this building, I'd ask for us to recognise that you're here to support the family. I'd also like to make an apology in terms of the heating system today. What happened is that on Sunday the heating system went and they were looking at getting engineers out and such forth. The problem has been is that it's a total new reinstall. So therefore it was unable to be fixed. So also apologies. At the back of the building there's two separate heating systems, so at the back of the building is warmer compared to here, so please, my apologies on behalf of the church, is something that was way out of our control. I'm going to ask, in terms of the keeping of the program, that Minister Monica will be doing the opening prior. And in terms of the prior, I just wish to remember that it's not when we bow our heads and close our eyes, it's a central focus of attention, not to me, not unto man, not unto ministry, not unto movement, but unto the master, the creator of heavens and earth. You see, we all here today to support, and we have intentions, and great intentions to support, and I commend you all for doing so. But I must remind you that the fact whether you have religious convictions or not, that you are only here because there are breath in your lungs. It wasn't the alarm clock, it wasn't the fact that you had a funeral, it wasn't the case of a hunger pump. But somebody greater than you and I allow for you to be here. So when we reverence aspect of closing our eyes, it's just the focus to say thank you and appreciate. So I invite Mr. Monica to come up to do the opening prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Greetings and good morning, everyone. My sincere condolences to the Witter family and friends. You know, it's never easy to come to terms when you lose a loved one. But my colleague mentioned before that God is a very present help in the time of need. And believe me, he can help. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come forward to the throne of grace, Lord. I come with the Whitaker family and friends and those who have come to support. Lord, they have come with broken hearts. But you are the one who mends broken hearts. And this morning, as I lift up the, Whit the Whitaker family and friends before you this morning, Father God, I pray, Lord, that your peace, your comfort, and even your joy, Lord, because they will remember the good times that they spent with Anthony. Father, we lift them up before you this morning. And as I pray, Father God, hallelujah, that you are the very, very present help in the time of need. I pray, Lord, that you will walk with them. I pray that you will talk with them. I pray that you will come so close to them, Lord, that they can feel your strength and they can feel your comfort. Lord, I lead them into your hands today. Because they are created in your image, Father God, regardless of who they are. And as I lead them to you today, Father God, the time, oh hallelujah, is not easy. But you, hallelujah, can help them to make it easier. We lift them up before you today, Lord. Even though our hearts are breaking. Because it's not easy when we lose a loved one. But we know, Lord, that you are the great comforter. You are the healer. And in time, Lord Jesus, will not be so difficult. They will never forget, but they will always be able to remember Anthony. We lift you up and we honor you this morning, Father God. We give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. That we can come to you with all our fears. We can come to you with all our tears because tears are a language to you, Lord. And so this morning, as I leave the winter family, I leave the friends, I leave those who have come to support, oh hallelujah, to your loving and tender care. I tell you thanks once again, because Father God, you are in control, regardless of what is happening around us, regardless of what is going on, hallelujah. I pray, Lord, that they will come to you, hallelujah, knowing that you can help, knowing that you are able to help, hallelujah. As I leave them into your hands, I tell you thanks once again for being our Father in heaven, and for being the one that's sticking and closer than a brother. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In no other name but Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Monica. Amen. So let's be. That's what that means. As we are going now in speaking with the family, in speaking and meeting with Sharon, and having conversations with Sharon and Carla. And knowing that this is the sentiment of the family, that they want to celebrate. They want to celebrate the life of Anthony. They want to celebrate. It's difficult, and I know that right now that this is surreal. Their minds are perplexed, and we're sat wondering, and all of us sit wondering and wondering why. But as we come together today, and as we will celebrate, and I will unpack further as we go along in the service. As I said, we're here to support. So I'm asking for us today, as we start with this opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. The hymn is in the program to those who have a problem. If you do not, please share with your neighbor. And if you rise to your feet, and can I make my apologies again? I am not a singer. The Bible says to make a joyful noise. I make a noise. I'm not even too sure about how joyful it is, but I know that you who are here to celebrate and you are here to accompany the family who will help me out. Am I right? Yeah. That, I got a big one there. This, um, family. Fam this is family, family. Yeah? Let's go and try it like that. So everyone's going to try it with us. So I know we've got people that can sit here to raise the tone. So over to Mr. Mark McKenzie as he will help us as we start this hymn.
It's a long day, please. A sister of Anselm, who will be reading Psalms 23.
Mary to come up. And can we encourage Mary as she comes along? <laughs>
When he was, she, when she came through life, I feel like it was changed. When he had Tanisha, Sasha, that's that he was younger. And I feel like when Shadi came, he just felt like I could change, I could change whatever, let's go to Cheshire, let's do everything that I've always wanted to do. And Shadi's name was a mixture of Andy and Shadi, Shadi and Andy. Shadi. And I always just found that out day. I was like, whoa, that's lovely. It's just lovely. But anyway, we get back to Andy. So, me and Andy obviously had another relationship, we used to go raving. Everyone knows Andy's a dancer, who's even in the video. A dancer, a big boy, can dance. And he's love music, go jungle, they drive into the avenue, pass this car, sweep room, go to sweep room, any car that's allowed, got a loud system, play a jungle, you can hear Andy before he even comes. That's it, hey Andy. That's just him. But I went there one day and he was listening to this song, he said to me, listen to this song. And I was like, I didn't really get it. He's like, okay, but the rapper, that's me, the rapper. Had no hands. And I was like, didn't really get it. And I'm obviously showing what they got there. You just have to listen to the words. So I'm just going to say these words of this song. And it's not to bring anybody down, it's just how Andy felt. And he was trying to let us know. So it's called Gifted Hands, Why Not Star. The biggest smile on my face when I'm around. You can't really tell that I'm heavy. Really do my best to how it could. Keep my head, keep my head from tilting down. Deep inside, I feel like a bird. Everybody in my ear saying I should keep going, but realizing that my heart is torn. Some days I wake up excited because I know exactly what I'm doing. Other days I still wish I could have gone. But it's cool because I've dealt with the pain. If, it were, if I wasn't so solid, then I would melt in the rain. And the cycles I am in ain't doing nothing, just keep on repeating. So I felt insane. And I held tight to my selfish ways, wouldn't seek help because I would self meditate. But when you look at me, just know it's never too late. I don't care if it's a race, I must set my own pace. On my mark, ready, set, go. I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I hadn't done my part. Then it even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard. That was before, but now I feel, why not start? Why not start? And that's it with Andy. He used to come to every family thing in the house, the whole family. And they would shout out, oh, our kids just Andy in the house. And there was food. At a certain time when Andy got sick, he wasn't coming places. He'd phone him and he'd say, it's coming, but that's just his way of not coming and not letting me run him down. Like, Andy, you're coming. Phone him on the day, his phone's off. But we just know, and he was never, ever a virgin. Everyone might not have been as there as much. We've all been sick, but that's why one game, 10 at 10 minutes. So at least one can be there. And we will all love you, and you just know you are a star in heaven. You've got an angel now in heaven, and you're going to just look over us. You can be that strong actor, that strong brother, that could knock someone out for us. That person again, I'm going to can, love you, and you have got all the best actors. You are the most fun brother, and I just want to say, I love Sharon. So I love Sharon, she's amazing. All right, and all the people, everybody, thank you everyone for coming. From that day, 
From the day I met Anthony, with his loud public personality, he just grabbed my attention. Anthony loved raving, from raving to fatherhood, and becoming my husband, he'd always put me first and his kids. The phrase, family first, would be the feeling for the one and only Anthony Bill. He loved with no boundaries, and that's the definition of unconditional love. Let's move on to Welford. Who is he? <laughs> Russo RMD. There would be no Russo without his three brothers. And he loved them so much. He always flies that flag high. He wore it proud. Alongside the infamous saying, if you know it, can't see with me as Malakaba. After family, jungle and fast cars was a very close second. Along with food, he would call his sisters and say, Shut up, won't feed me. Or he's had big and tongues for days. He loved to play them against each other, stating they were all the best cooks in their own way. Anthony believed he was the only child, and everyone else was adopted. He would even say it in front of mum, and mum would go mad and say, All oh, my ten, ten kids come from me. Yeah? <laughs> um, if you didn't know what Anthony was a salesman, and he would prank call mum all the time, or call to say, What are you picking up, Paula? <laughs> Not only did Miss P and Lloyd went to the this beautiful, handsome, vibrant comedian. They had a bad that if none of them was married by the age of 50, they would marry each other and in love with their one and only child. Yes, we know we the one and only child because it's for all of us and the rest of the women. No matter what was thrown in my husband's direction, he was brave, fearless, and a one-man soldier. I am so grateful and blessed that our paths cross and we share some beautiful moments. Thank you for letting me keep Ward as well as with us. <laughs> I'd just like to say, be good and we shall be a Very, very striking color. 
And you all look so beautiful. I just want to commend you for the colors that you told this morning. So the scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 11. But you know, before I read this scripture, you listening to all the tributes, I can see that Anthony was a man who lived life. He liked to have, have some, some of the good times in life. And he would joke about many things in life. So even though it's a sad time for you today, I would just like you to hold on to some of those, those good times, the times when you have the laughter, times when you laugh until your belly wants to burst, you know, because that's the kind of person that I am coming to know, just listening to your privilege today. May God bless you all. He's out of your sight. It is not out of your heart. Amen? Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through to 11. And it reads, the topic of this is a time for everything. There's a time for everything. And a time for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to be. A time for war and a time for peace. What the work has gained from their toil. I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. I just want to remind you to remember that God is for you all the way. You just need to call upon him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Minister Monica. The great man himself, the Bible declares he's one of the wisest men that lived. Solomon down the line of David, King David. Solomon being a 12 child. You see, when David and Bishop are going together, first of all, this wasn't the right way in terms of David. If you read the Bible, the Bible is a quite interesting book. Six or six books catalog together. But David was a man that the Bible says in Psalms 51 was after God's own heart, but he messed up for some big time. This man tried to jump it, man. Speaking in our language now, I'll give you some Bible. It's interesting that we're here, and some of you may never come in this setting again to so be looking or hearing about and preaching, but the Bible is more interesting than what you think. And the reason why I'm always saying this is because it gives everybody an opportunity to recognize no matter what you've done in life, whether you think you've got value in yourself, yes or no, or people have spoken badly about you, people have spoken down about you. David. And the son, and the first son that had the sheep he was watching the sheep from the rooftop while she was bathing. And this man, because of his kingship, decided to take liberties. And in taking liberties, he wanted this man's wife. And the man was out at war, fighting for the country. And David was slipping in and doing a thing. This is Bible. And decides that once he's done his sins now, he's going to try and jack him up. But this man recognized that something was a wife, wouldn't sleep with his wife. And not sleep with his wife, David said he's got to find a way of dealing with this man. He decides to put the man at the front of a hand. And this man gets killed and the child's born. And while the child's born, it wasn't under the sanction, it wasn't under the covering of God. 
so God allowed for that child to die for. David had many of the wives and many of the children, but his 12th child, which we come to in this book, Ecclesiastes, the Bible says he was one of the richest men. This man had dog, this man had opulence. And the reason why I mention all this is that even though David best of killed, fornicated, Psalms 51 talks about the aspect that no matter what you have done, whether you're coming from the background of being a prostitute, being a drug dealer, being a people found even, yeah, we'll go there. The grace and the mercy of God has enough power to forgive. It's important that you leave from here remembering that no matter how you live, that if you come to that point that you recognize Jesus as Lord, He can help you. So don't let the world tell you and dictate and you buy labels, you get into certain things, you have all of this opulence and all said and done, even though we've got the blue, even though the nice super out there in terms of it being unique around Anthony, we have hope. So as we go on, in terms of the rest of the tributes, I'd like to invite to be read from his daughter can you encourage your daughter and grandson to come up you're looking at Anthony's legacy and generation coming through encourage them again please You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. I pray we cannot see you. You'll always be our by the outside. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. So obviously we're all here. But we're all going to be called back to our maker one day. And we will all be with God one day. So we're all going to return back to him. And he's not gone. He's waiting up there for us. And he's waiting for us. Thank you for your courage.
So what you do now, you know what's happening, yeah? Put a tear down his eye, he wins. So to me, that's all I want to share with you. That's my last one in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Going there with him, and as Mary said, just seeing that life, 
the community that grew up with all the angst and all the animosity around and all the just the, just the problems being grown up in this community, that was a breath of fresh air going to that place and being around and all that. And this is where you could see Andy in a different environment, in a different light. He wasn't, he wasn't really like us, like that, you know, in the house. He wasn't like that. He was just there, so like, always smiling at that age, age man. And always wanting to take care of you all the time. He ain't going anywhere anymore. He ain't going anywhere. I'm happy And it's like, I'm happy. No, he wants to just protect his family like that. And this is what I know Sharon and the kids have got from him. It's like, it looks heavy, but it's all protection, man. It's all protection, it's love. And the sacrifice that went me down there helps me just get through a difficult period in my life at the age, losing my uncle to these streets. You know, gradually dying, all kind of different stuff was happening. I just feel like the sacrifice that he made for me and for my happiness, this is why this day is so special. You know, just, I've not lost him. He's up there with mom side by side, powering, watching us, he's watching us. Be happy, be sad, he's watching an argument, he's watching the disputes, and he's like, you know what? I knew it would happen, but you will work it out as we always have done. And I appreciate everyone who's come here today, who have reached out to you personally said, yo, just come, whether he was against his family, for his family, whatever, you're all part of our history together. You're all part of our history. And when any of us drops out in this family, because this is a sure thing that we've all got in common in this room here, as much as you want to like a bigger, man, a small, or whatever, you will end up in that box. You will end up in this box here. So just think about how you deal with people. Yeah? How you want to get on with people because you might go on like you've got this angst back against this person, but when they drop out, you're the most broken person on the floor. So I'm just saying, just be patient with people. If you don't get on with them, work out a little platform, a little level, like you and them and communicate. But if not, drop them out, move on. Don't prolong any kind of angst. But let me end it on a nice note. This is boring, this is ten children. You know, my dream, this is nine, eight, seven, there will always be ten. Every single person here, you know that you took from this heart. You've got a place to be up. You've got an air in my own house. You've got a baby in my own house. You've got a baby in my own house. You've got a baby in my own house. And this thing, when you drop out and you move over, come and support us because this is the love that we need so we just don't feel alone. Thank you very much. It's strange how, in the midst of what I think is an evil God, can turn around.